There's this thing that's been on my mind a lot lately. I think it's been on a lot of people's minds, and maybe yours too. Immune boosting foods. The idea of eating foods to bolster immune function is always enticing. And especially right now, in 2020, as the world deals with the COVID-19 pandemic. But what does it really mean to be immune boosting? And are there specific foods and nutrients that I can eat to boost my immune system? Let's science it. Hey, welcome to Nourishable, I'm Dr. Lara. This is the first video in a two-part series on immune-boosting foods. Link to part two in the video description. And right off the bat, I need to say that there are no known foods, nutrients, or supplements that can prevent or treat infection with the novel coronavirus. So if that's what you're looking for, let me say in my most Canadian way, sorry. But what I am going to dig into is this question. What does it really mean to be immune boosting? Are there foods or supplements that can truly boost the immune system? Your body's immune system is like your government's military. They're both tasked with protecting and defending. The military is protecting a country from foreign invaders. The immune system is protecting your body from invading microbes. The military has several branches with specialized functions. The Army, Navy, Air Force, and Space Force. Air Force as airmen, Space Force as spacemen. Nothing embarrassing or comical about it. Similarly, the immune system has many kinds of white blood cells, each with their own specialized functions. I'm gonna tell you about three tools in the immune system's arsenal. The first tool is inflammation. The goal of inflammation is to deploy infantry troops to the battlefront. Inflammation is initiated when white blood cells sound the alarm by secreting chemical messengers into the blood. These chemical messengers are called cytokines. When white blood cells secrete cytokines, this helps recruit more white blood cells to the battlefront, essentially rallying the troops. Tool number one is inflammation, when inflammatory cytokines signal troops to man their battle stations. Tool number two are free radicals. Free radicals are highly reactive compounds stored inside some types of white blood cells. When these white blood cells engulf a microbe, they spray it with free radicals to destroy the invader. The troops engage the enemy and open fire. Basically, these free radicals help digest a microbe that the white blood cell ate. But here's the thing. While inflammation and free radicals are effective at destruction, they're rather nonspecific and can damage healthy tissue caught in the crossfire. So the immune system needs to make the warfare more targeted. And this is where tool number three comes in. Antibodies. Antibodies are proteins that specifically recognize the invading microbe. These antibodies paint the target for strategic strike. Special memory white blood cells act like military intelligence, storing antibodies to microbes we've encountered in the past. If we're invaded by the same microbe again, then the immune system rapidly ramps up production of those specific antibodies so we can prevent an infection before it is established. Three tools the immune system uses are inflammation to rally the troops, antibodies to target the attack, and free radicals to digest engulfed microbes. So where does nutrition fit in? In order for the immune system to be constantly producing new white blood cells and ramping up antibodies, it needs raw materials. And those raw materials are essential nutrients from the diet. There are decades of human data showing that severe malnutrition impairs immune function. Deficiencies of particular nutrients are especially problematic, like protein. Protein is required to provide the building blocks to produce new blood cells and antibodies. But how much protein do you need? Well, it depends on your size. Adults need 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. So let's see, I'm about 58 kilograms, so 0.8 times 58 equals around 47 grams of protein per day. I can get that from an egg plus pistachios plus Greek yogurt plus a serving of chicken. There are many ways to get sufficient protein with or without animal products. Protein deficiency is exceptionally rare for Americans, so this isn't really an issue for immune function. Deficiencies of other nutrients can severely impair immune function too. Some are required to speed up chemical reactions when making new white blood cells, like zinc, vitamin A, and the B vitamins. Others function as antioxidants, like vitamin C, vitamin E, and selenium. Remember those free radicals used to destroy microbes? 
Well, if those free radicals get out of control, they can wreak havoc. And this is a special type of havoc called oxidative stress. Antioxidants like vitamin C and E can quench free radicals to neutralize this oxidative stress. Moral of the story, don't be deficient in essential nutrients if you want your immune system to function. Nutrient deficiency is common in some low- and middle-income countries, especially for pregnant women and young children. In these cases, supplementing with essential nutrients to reverse deficiency enables immune function and is truly life-saving. In high-income countries like the United States, deficiency is rare. Between varied diets and fortified foods, Americans have sufficient intake of essential nutrients for immune function. But is there a difference between sufficiency and optimal when it comes to immune health? Supplement companies would like you to think so. More on that in part two. That's what science tastes like. Thanks for tuning in to Nourishable. Check out all my references and link to part two in the video description and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all things nutrition.